Yes. Uh, I'm going to do both. <laughs> yes. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, ever. Tell me, how can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Tell me, how can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> we certainly do thank and praise the Lord, as we often and always say, for another day's journey, for how the Lord has blessed us and kept us even unto this very hour. Truly, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, uh, no telling where we would be. And as long as the Lord is with us and, and helping us and strengthening us, we're going to be all right. Amen. doesn't matter what the enemy may come and throw our way. The scripture says and it promises that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us, God has given us the power to condemn it, to cast it down. So we thank God that we have faith to move mountains. We have faith to believe and trust in him. No matter what circumstance or what situation may come our way, the Lord is on our side. And I thank him also because even uh, when we don't do the things that we ought to do and should do, there's grace and there's mercy. And there's, there's strength and there's help. As long as we come to ourselves and turn and walk in the other direction, the Lord will forgive us. The Lord will help us. The scripture says it is not of his will that any should perish. And it's not God's will that we should perish, that we should be eternally separated with him, from him. But it is his will that all might be saved, that all might be delivered. And I thank God that he's not only a God of a second chance, he's a God that of many chances. And we praise him for it. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So as we... Get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. 
We certainly want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. And let us pray as well that we ourselves take the scriptures to heart when it says that the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers. And you and I are the laborers. Pray that the Lord will help us, uh, that we will let our light shine. Help us that we'll be the salt of, of the earth. And help us that we'll be his witnesses, especially in these last and evil days. Uh, <laughs> if you allow me to say it this way, uh, that it's so dark in the world now that you can be a flicker of light and be a beacon of light. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. If you just walk in God's ways and keep his commandments and seek his face and, and hold up the bloodstained banner, God will honor you. God will bless you. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. So as we want to go before the Lord in prayer, um, once again, we want to remember any bereaved families and we want to remember our Bible study on today, uh, that the Lord will send us a word. Uh, thank God that we're reopening our, our, our church up for Bible study. Uh, and we thank God for that. And we thank God um, that there's not a famine in the land for the hearing of the word of God. Amen. And we prove that every day by our desire. Our desire to want to, to be uh, in his presence. Our desire, as the uh, our Bible says, as the deer panteth after the water, so panteth our soul after thee, O God. So let, let us pray. Let us stand. Let the church stand. And let us pray. Uh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly do thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to stand before you one more time to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And Lord, we cast all of our cares upon you, for we know that you care for us. We ask you, Lord, that you look upon us and look upon our hearts and our minds and our spirit and our soul, that you search us, Lord, even in this hour. That you purge everything out of us that is not like you. Lord, bless us to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Help us, Lord, to please you in all times, in all situations, in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you look upon the dying world and save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Bless us and strengthen us that we'll be thy witnesses, that we'll be the light, that we'll be that salt. In the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord, that you bless on every hand. Bless our Bible study on today. Let words be spoken to strengthen us and encourage our hearts. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory and honor in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, come on in. Hallelujah. And manifest your greatness and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we certainly, once again, praise God. Praise God for how good he is. Thank you, Lord. And his mercy endureth forever. Um, I want you to turn with me uh, this evening to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter number 10. Deuteronomy chapter number 10. And Deuteronomy simply means repeat. It's a repeat uh, in the Bible concerning the things that God has done, his testimonies and, and his word and uh, his laws. And uh, our Bible study is dealing with, it's a part two of what doth the Lord require? What doth the Lord require of us? What does the Lord require of us? And as we begin to uh, look into the scriptures and begin to 
start out our Bible study, I want to ask you a question. In fact, I want to ask you a couple questions. Uh, basically, how often do you think about your life being lived to please God? In other words, how often do you think about, is my life pleasing to God? Does God, is he pleased with my sacrifices? And uh, any God that you serve, whether it's the God Jehovah, or it's the, as the scripture says in uh, book of Corinthians, the God of this world. Either or, you have to give a sacrifice to whatever God you're serving. And the Bible tells us that uh, David, when he said that he wouldn't offer anything unto God except it cost him something. You can't offer anything to God except it cost you something. In fact, the scripture says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, for that is your reasonable service. It's, and that reasonable service simply means that's what you're supposed to do. It's, 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 it's His requirement of you. God has some requirements of us. Have you, have you considered, I know people have considered in their own hearts and their own minds that in the end, uh, God is going to have judgment upon us. In other words, that, that, that we have to answer to God at the end of our lives. Uh, but the truth is, we have to answer to God every day. The Bible tells us that we sit at the judgment seat of Christ every day. God judges us every day of our thoughts, our deeds, and our actions. Every day, God, God, God wants us to ponder and consider what we do, what we say, and how we live. And He wants us, our lifestyle, to line up with His requirements. Amen? God, God wants us to line up with His requirements. Because in the end, uh, uh, what God has to say about it is all that really matters. And, and we want him to say, well done. <laughs> Thy good and faithful servant enter ye into the joy of the Lord. I, I, don't, I can't bear, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I couldn't bear to hear those words, depart from me, uh, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. What makes the difference? The ones that are departing from the Lord are the ones that never met what God requires. But those that are going to hear the words, well done, thy good and faithful servant, they found out what God requires and they were able to sacrifice, give it unto the Lord what he requires. Amen? Hallelujah. By God. And, and you know, when you mature, I'm going to get into the scriptures, but I'm getting a little happy right now. Because when you, when you mature and grow in God, uh, what he requires of you to uh, sacrifice, it becomes a joy. It becomes pleasurable because you know that you are pleasing God. And you know that, that, that God has your best interest at heart. When God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, when he brought them out of Egypt and gave them commands and gave them statutes and gave them laws. He said, I'm doing it for your good. Amen. So that, so that you are, uh, would be able to dwell in the land so that, so that you would receive your inheritance, so that you would be blessed. So when God gives us a requirement and gives us uh, 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 laws and statutes and precepts and, and, and things such as that, commandments, those are given for our good, amen, to bless us so that we would know how to possess, possess our vessels in sanctification and in honor. 
so that we can live this life and be prosperous and be blessed. Amen? So, as, as we're looking in the scriptures on today, ah, glory, uh, in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy means to repeat. It's a repeat of what God has already stated uh, concerning his laws, the Torah, the word of God, uh, and his statutes and his precepts. And we're going to get more into that as, as we move closer into our Bible study. But our subject today is, what doth the Lord require? What is the Lord requiring of us? And the third and final question I want to ask you to ponder before we get into our study is, is what is God asking of us? Is it, it's, it's based on our positions with him. God is asking you to meet his requirements based on his your position with him. Let me say that again. Let me say that again so we can understand God and why he's asking and of, of us certain requirements. God is asking these requirements of us because of our position in Him. And what do you mean by that? That, that God says, be holy for I am holy. The Bible says that you were bought with a price and you are not your own. You are His royal priesthood, His chosen generation. You are His holy nation. You are a representative of God. You are to be his light uh, that is in the world. You ought to be the salt of the earth. Amen? You are God's servant. You are the servant of the Lord. You, God has redeemed us. He has, he has sanctified us. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has positioned us far above principalities and powers. God has elevated us. Uh, to, to be a child of God is the highest elevation you can be in humanity, if you allow me to say it. It's the highest position to be a child or a servant of God. There's, there's no other position that is above that. God has translated us, the scripture says, into the kingdom of his dear son. So, so in, in, in light of all of that, God has some requirements of us in, in because of how he has positioned us. Hey, my God. Uh, if we were to uh, think about it in, in these terms, if I were uh, uh, my Lord, I don't want to use that analogy. I was going to use if I were the president of the United States, you would think that I would act a certain way. But uh, 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 if I were if I were Queen Elizabeth, you would expect Queen Elizabeth to act a certain way, royal. You would act. A, you would want her to act with integrity. You would expect her to act and be honest. You would expect her to be kind and, 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 and patient. You would expect her to, to, to be mindful of, of those things that are important. Uh, uh, not, not things that are, are frivolous or things that are childlike or childish. Uh, Paul says, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I acted as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. You wouldn't you wouldn't expect a 30-year-old man to be playing hopscotch and, and jacks and, 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 and video games 24 hours a day and seven days a week. You would think that they would be mindful of what's important. And same way with God. God has positioned us and he expects us and requires that we, 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 we act a certain way with dignity. 
with, 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 with certain honesty and integrity. Amen? God is requiring of that of us because of how he has positioned us, where he has placed us in the body of Christ. So as we look then, thank you Lord, um, in Deuteronomy chapter number 10, uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 10, and I want to drop down uh, to verse number 12. I want to drop down to verse number 12. And he says, uh, this is uh, God, he actually is, is uh, telling Moses to uh, reestablish the Ten Commandments, the Ten Sayings. And those are God's word, the Ten Commandments, the Sayings. And uh, God is actually here now giving them a charge. And God is has often given us charges. Uh, Paul gave Timothy a charge. Uh, God gives us a charge. And a charge just simply means uh, he's, he's admonishing us to hold a certain standard. Amen? God wants us to hold a certain standard. Am I right? Hallelujah. Alright, so we see here. Verse number 12, and he says, and now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? And I love that. He answers them a question. Amen. What, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? What is he asking of thee? And like I said earlier, the requirement comes from his positioning. God, and when we're talking about Israel... God redeemed Israel. Uh, and the Bible says he brought them out on eagle's wings. And he delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh. And, and he walked them through the Red Sea. And he, he caused them to, to be blessed. And he was with them as a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. God, God took uh, them on and positioned them and made them a kingdom. And literally, the Bible says God set his affection upon them. Not because they were great, but because they were not great. And God himself was going to make them great. God, God brought us out uh, uh, through Christ Jesus. He positioned us in Christ who gave his life for you and I. So that we could be holy, so that we could be saved, so that we can be delivered from the from the from the hand of the enemy. Notice what he says. He says at verse number twelve, and, and now Israel, what doth the Lord require of thee? Uh, now note here it is. The number one, God requires that they fear the Lord thy God. God requires that you reverence him. That word fear means to reverence him. Now, I want to I get a little deep here in the sense of reverencing God. When, when an individual really, truly reverence God, you walk in God's ways. You love him with all of your heart. With all of your might, with all of your strength. And you, you, you to reverence God means that you realize that God is the most important thing. And, and there's nothing else that is, that is important or above what God says. It's more or less, it's more or less, this is how you know that you reverence God. That, that, that. You always reference him in your way of thinking. You always reference him in your way of thinking. In other words, if, if I do this or if I say this, will God be pleased? Uh, you know, as children growing up, uh, somebody does something, they say, ooh, mommy going to get you. Ooh, daddy going to 
get you. And, and the ones that say ooh are the ones that reverence with mommy and daddy have said. They reverence the standard that mommy and daddy have laid out. When we reverence God, we base all of our decision making on, on whether or not it pleases God. And if what I'm saying, if what I'm doing doesn't please God, then I don't do it, I don't say it, because I don't want to be out of the will of God. So notice what I said, and notice this is the first, this is the first requirement, amen, that, that they reverence God or that they fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. That means that you reverence God in everything that you do. You put him above everything else and everybody else, and you walk and live in his ways, all right? Now, notice, notice, he said, at, at verse number 11, and the Lord thy God, I'm sorry, verse number 12, oh, all right, let me back up, er, that's why I need a reader. <laughs> uh, verse number 12, it says, and now Israel, what doth the Lord require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, notice, to walk in his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So what, what he's saying here is, is God requires this of us. It's not an option. If you're going to walk with God, you've got to fear him. You've got to walk in all of his ways, and that walk means uh, uh, to live. It becomes your environment. Where you, where you live is your walk. It, where you live is your environment. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. My God. I'm going to get ahead of myself. Uh, people who are not spiritual can't walk in his ways. People who are not spiritual can't live in his environment. I was thinking earlier, as I was meditating uh, on this Bible study, about people operating in the flesh and in the spirit. Those are two different environments. People who who operate in the flesh, if you, if you uh, truly understand what I'm saying, they are given to do what they want to do. They want to do what the flesh requires them to do. They that walk in the spirit, they want to do what God wants them to do. And you know that you are in the flesh when you buck up against what God wants you to do. Let me say that again. You know that you are in the flesh when you buck up, when you, when you resist what God wants you to do. You know that you are in the spirit when you submit and humble yourself. To do what God wants you to do. Now, let me say this. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's important for us to even think in our minds according to the Spirit. Let me say that again. It's important for us to even rationalize and to begin to understand God's precepts and his concepts and the way of living, we have to understand it in the spirit in order to accomplish it and to fulfill it. If I think of precepts and concepts of God in the flesh, I'll always miss the mark. I'll always miss what God is saying. Notice, uh, the scripture says, it tells us uh, basically, uh, uh, do unto others 
as you would have them do unto you. That's the spirit. The flesh say, get them before they get you. Huh? And, and, and now, the flesh can't understand. <laughs> uh, do unto others as they would have them to do unto you. The flesh can't understand that. The flesh can't comprehend that. And the flesh will always resist that. Because it's not thinking according to the spirit, the Ruach, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God. God's word is spiritual. It's not fleshly. Why? Because God is a spirit. And he that cometh to God must worship them in spirit and in truth. That's why you've got to walk in the spirit. That word walk there means to live. Huh? You got and that that to live means not only uh 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 uh, uh it, it it comes from a concept of it's your way of living, it's your way of thought, your way of actions, your way of deeds, your ways, like like that uh one sister, uh uh Ruth, thank you, Lord, her mother-in-law was Naomi. She said when she decided to convert. She said, your God will be my God. Huh? And, and, and uh, your people will become my people. What was she doing? She was literally, that's a, a perfect example of, of, of denying the flesh. Because she was a pagan worshiper. And she denied the flesh, but she turned and, 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 and started walking in the spirit. Amen? Walking in the ways of God. And that's what we have to do. Anytime that we are, are living in this world, we have to turn constantly from the flesh and walk in the spirit. Constantly. And the two are always warring against one another. Amen? You know, let me say this. You can become so skilled at it, wherein you can see uh, an attack from the flesh and, and, and be able by the spirit to counteract it even before it becomes a problem. <laughs> like a, that beautiful? You can see the enemy coming uh, and, and counteract the enemy through the spirit. You can become so skilled. Hallelujah. And, and walking in the spirit that you see the enemy. You hear the enemy's voice. Uh, you see how the enemy is, is lining up and, and trying to, uh, my God, trying to maneuver you into a trap. You can see it through the spirit and become so skilled. Hallelujah. And walking in the spirit that you contradict. Hallelujah, the ways of the flesh. Even within yourself. Even within yourself. You're so in tune to the spirit. To where your flesh will rise up. Huh? And, 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 and you counter that, you counteract it. Hallelujah, before it becomes a stronghold. Before it influences you. You keep it in subjection. You put it in subjection. My God. It, I love it when the old the old saints used to say, "Well, this flesh acting up, you better get into shape. I'm gonna put you on a fast." <laughs> they, see, they they recognize, amen. They're recognizing that the flesh is trying to overtake them. So 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 they put out a decree. <laughs> yeah, they put out a decree concerning the spirit and 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 to subdue the flesh. So that they can walk in the ways of God. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the Bible tells us. I know I'm getting a little bit off track here. But the Bible tells us. That we're not ignorant to Satan's devices. Amen. We're not ignorant to what the enemy does. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and the only way. That you'll be able to combat what the enemy does. Is through the spirit. Amen. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are what? Not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So notice then, as we move on to what God requires. God 
requires you to live and to walk in the spirit. God requires you to mortify your flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not, not, not live according to the flesh, but live according to the spirit. Amen. And, and, and what I want to stress out of that is, is that it becomes your way of life. It becomes who you are. You can't straddle the fence. You can't please two. Amen. You've got to give yourself totally unto God. That's what he requires. God requires that of you. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been married now for 30 years. I know my wife would not want me to, to get me another woman and share uh, uh, myself with that other person and her. Amen? She'd be like, who do you think you are? <laughs> what do you think you do? Uh, it would not please her. Am I right? God does not want us to be married to another. Hallelujah. Thank you. Follow me. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Now, let's look here. Where we at? We in uh, verse number 12. It says, And now, Israel, what doth the Lord require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, no, no, and to love him. God requires this of you. It's a requirement. And it's, it, this requirement is a must. Amen? It's a must. You have to love God. Amen? You've got to set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth. You've got to love God and keep His commandments. And He says His commandments, when you love Him, are not grievous. Man, got to love him. Got to love God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. Amen. Got to love him. Thank you, Lord. If you don't, your love is, is a sacrifice in and of itself. Notice the scripture. God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. You've got to love God so much that you give. Give what? Yourself. <laughs> Thank you. You got to give yourself. And, 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 and I love this. I love this. That, that you got to choose every day to give of yourself to God. Every day. Yesterday is good, but it's gone. What are you doing today? Amen. And today, you've got to make the decision that no matter what happens, I'm going to love God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to believe God. Now notice, when you love God like that, the scripture says, blessed are they that are not offended in me. When you love God like that, it covers huh, a multitude of faults. Not God's faults, because he doesn't have any, but the faults of others. It, it covers a multitude of sins. Not God's sins because he don't have us. But others. Huh? It, it hopeth all things. It beareth all things. It endureth all things. When you love God the way that he loves you. Huh? My God. Hallelujah. You, 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 you're going something. When you love the Lord the way that he loves you. Uh, you're going some. Some people have said, well, Pastor, I don't know if that's possible. That's why he gives you the Holy Ghost. Of yourself, you can't do it. But he gives you the fruit of the Spirit to help love upon him. To help you love upon others. Amen? Gotta love. Hallelujah. That's, that's a requirement of God. How often do I love? All the time. How long do I love until the end? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. My God. And, and, and love keeps on giving. Love keeps on trusting. Thank you. And that's a requirement of God. Now, if the only thing that I'm, I'm required to hate is sin. And, and the, I, I got to hate sin. What a perfect hate. Why? Because God 
hate sin. And, and I got to love. I got to love. I got to love God and I got to love his people. When I say his people, I'm talking about all people. All souls belong to God. And I got to be willing to make the sacrifice. No matter what happens. Amen? Now, this is what I mean about that carnal mind. A carnal minded person will say, well, what if they do me wrong? What, what, uh, what if this scenario happens? What, what if this, what if they do it? I'm still supposed to love them? I'm still supposed to treat them right? What if they're always talking about me and, and mistreating me? What if they, they, every time I run up against them, I come up against them, they rub me the wrong way? Am I still supposed to love them? See, with a spiritual mind, it would be yes. A carnal mind will wrestle with it to their own destruction. To where they, my God, my God, I feel, I feel my bishopric coming on. To where they, they'll start making pillar excuses. They'll find it in the word of God and put out some word to, to, to help with their conclusion. <laughs> Y'all know how we are. We'll, we'll find us a, a scripture to help us with our conclusion. To, to, well, the Bible says live peaceably with all men. Uh, and, and you know, you got you to live peaceably with them. And some people you can't live peacefully with. So, you know, hey, I'm going to have to go my way. You know, and instead of instead of loving through it, instead of working through it, instead of God ain't told you to go your way, because that's that's actually helping you. You know, let me say this, my God, let me say this that that if you surrender in every battle, you won't have any victories. God, let me say that again. If you surrender in every battle. You won't have any victories. Life is full of battles. Amen. And God wants you to have some victories. Amen. And in order to have some victories, you've got to fight. <laughs> you've got to endure. You've got to overcome. Hallelujah. You can't just be surrendering every time something comes up. Huh? I'm done with that. Huh? Oh, 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 <laughs> my God, you can't, you'll never have a victory. You can't be afraid, my God, you can't be afraid to take a hit. You can't be flinching all the time. Every time you see the hand of the enemy come, you flinch. Don't hit me, you know. You can't be afraid to take a hit. That's love. God will love you through it. God will help you through it. God, God is a God of love. And if you love him, he loves you. He'll love you through it. <laughs> my God, my God. Who am I talking to today? Thank you, Lord. Now note, note verse 13. He says, Verse 13. Boy, hold on. We get finished with 12. He says, You got to love the Lord thy God with all your heart. And, and when you see the word heart there, and it doesn't connect to uh, uh, spirit, it doesn't connect to intellect, and it doesn't connect to will, it's really speaking of with your spirit and your intellect and your will. Anytime you see the word heart just, just standing alone, it's referring to your intellect, your spirit, and your will. God wants your everything. And, and normally, it would also speak to your soul, but he breaks it out and says, with all thy soul, which represents thy total being. Everything. Your intellect, your will, your spirit and your soul all have to love God. Amen? The reason why he says it that way is because 
we can compartmentalize our spirit, our will, and our soul. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that I can, I can say I love God with my heart, but with my hands, it don't line up. Follow me? I can say I love God, but my actions and my deeds don't match it. That's compartmentalizing. I'm saying it with my mind, but my hands and my deeds don't match what's in my mind. Amen? And therefore, it doesn't match what's in my soul. Everything has to line up. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. Your mind uh, has to love God. I can say I love God, but in my mind, thinking so much evil, so much wicked, amen, it, it has to match. My thoughts have to match that I love him. Huh? My, my deeds have to match that I love him. My soul, my total being has to match and line up. Hallelujah. That I love him. Thank you, Lord. My faith has to match up that show that I love God. My God. When you love God, you can say, Lord, I believe that you can do anything. And, and, and you're willing to prove with your lifestyle by being a sacrifice that God, I'm, I'm going to love you through the end. My God. That's what he wants. He wants, he wants your, he wants, you ever, my God, you ever see people <laughs> that uh, they stand up to testify? And they testify and testify, the testify, I was going to say the testification. <laughs> the testimony sounds so good and they testify and they going in and you hearing the words, but you look, to, you, you know they lie. You're like, whoa, what you're saying doesn't match up with how you've been living. You ever saw people like that? Oh, you know, you get, you get new baby saints that come in to the church and they testify of a storm about how, how good God is and, and, and how wonderful and, and, and how they got the victory over this and got the victory over that. And you as a seasoned saint say, well, time going to prove that. Time going to prove that. <laughs> we, we, you say it in your mind, not disparaging anybody, but, but uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> and and that, that's not bringing nobody down, but, but uh, in order to have a, a, a strong testimony, it has to match what you're saying. Same way with God. Uh, Y'all know uh, when Jesus, now God, I gotta move on. But with Jesus, when Jesus, he said, they gonna say unto me, Lord, 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 Lord. We prophesied in your name. Uh, we did this and that in your name. He said, I'm gonna say to you, depart from me, ye what? Workers of iniquity. The, the testimony that they had didn't match. We got to live this thing that our words and our lifestyle matches. My God, if I'm going to sing to the glory of God, let, let what I'm singing match what I'm living. If I'm going to testify to the glory of God, let what I'm testifying match what I'm living. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's love. Amen? Now, look. Uh, uh, notice what he said. Verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh, for thy good. Now, God's commandments, generally speaking, are the do's and the don'ts of God. We're talking about what God requires. Amen? So, 
in order to please God, you have to know what God requires. In order to know what God requires, you've got to know, my God, I'm getting a revelation, his do's and his don'ts. You follow me? You got to know his commandments, his do's and his don'ts. And when you know his commandments, then you can fulfill verse number 12, which says, To fear the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to love him, uh, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. So what I just said was this, and you can't fulfill verse 12 until you know what's right and wrong concerning the Lord. Amen? And his commandments are more than just the Ten Commandments. The, the, the Ten Commandments that, that refers in the Hebrew of meaning God's ways. His, his, no, I'm sorry, his sayings. It's God's sayings. And his sayings are the ten. But God has given many more commandments in his word. So you've really got to delve into and get into the word of God in order to find out what are his commands. We're commanded to love. Amen. We're commanded to love God. And we're commanded to love one another. Amen. That's a commandment from God. I'm commanded to show mercy. I'm commanded to show grace. I'm commanded to resist sin. I'm commanded to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Commanded. And, and when it's talking about statutes, statutes are really commandments as well, but they deal with uh, uh, more of, uh, of what you're supposed to do at a specific time. What I mean by that is this. Uh, you look at uh, festivals. The Hebrews, they, they had three festivals that were very prominent. Uh, the Passover, the Feast of the Tabernacle, and um, uh, the, the other one, uh, the Pentecost. Those were the three main feasts. And they, they were statutes unto the Lord, meaning that they had to participate in order to be in good graces with God or they would be excommunicated from Him. Amen? So at certain times, they had to uh, uh, participate in the will and in the worship of God. God commands us to worship Him. It's not an option. It's not a choice. God commands us to praise Him. And it's a statue. And what I mean by uh, praising God as a statue is meaning that there comes a time when you have to praise God. Amen? There's God has commanded us through his word and it's a statue to give thanks huh, unto the Lord when at all times huh, and to allow his praises to do what? Continually huh, be in thy mind. It's, it's not an option. It's a command or a statue from the Lord. Um, have you ever thought about it like that? That you have to praise God. That you have to give God thanks. <laughs> I love that one song that says, Praise is what I do. I wish I could sing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and that's who you are. That's what you do. Why? Because I'm commanded. It's a statue. Huh? Huh? The reason why it's a statue, I want you to catch it. The reason why it's a statue is because it's God's commandment given at a specific time. Amen. That's what makes it a statue. What, what is, is, is required of thee at a specific time. 
You follow me? Communion is a statue. It ain't something that you miss when, when it's given huh? at a specific time. You, uh, the, the Lord says, let a man examine himself to see whether or not he's in the faith. He never tells the child of God to skip communion because it's a statue. Huh? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus uh, was so caught up with it. Thank you, Lord, and loved it. Hallelujah. That, that he told him in the, in the scriptures, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. It's a statue. Huh? Hallelujah. And, and, and it has to be done the Lord's way. He's given you his, his, his statute with requirements. Huh? No sin in your life. Am I right? Uh, uh, tells us that 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 can 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 take of his command or his his communion uh, with sin in your life. Can't do it. Huh? He said, wait on other people. Thank you, Lord. Being able to discern his body and his blood. Those are statutes that we have to obey God and do his will at a specific time. Now, you may say, Pastor Quinn, why are you bringing this out like that? It's because sometimes we think it's an option. We think it's an option. Prayer is a statute. It's not an option. Communion is, is not an option. It's a requirement of the Lord. Fellowship. Being together with the saints. By any means necessary. It's not an option. It's a statue of the Lord. Amen. That's what God is requiring of us. Amen. Alright. Thank you Lord. I just want to show you what the difference between a commandment was. And a statue. A statute is a commandment as well, but the difference is, is a statute is something that is, that is put in place to be done at a specific time. Amen? And it's not an option. Not an option. Not an option. Amen? All right. Now, let's look here. He says, uh, to keep his commandments... To keep the commandments of the Lord. And notice, he says, And his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy what? Good. Amen. God has established requirements for us. For whose good? For our good. For our good. Amen. Now, I want you to... <laughs> Thank you, Lord. My God. I want you to go with me over to the book of, of Malachi. Michael. I'm sorry. Michael. Chapter number six. <laughs> My God. Before we go there, I just want to read this. And then we'll move on. It says, verse 14, for the, for the heaven and the heavens of heavens is the Lord thy God, the earth also with all that therein is. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. He says, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, great God and mighty and terrible and regardeth not regardeth not persons nor Take it reward. I love that. Just had to put that in there. <laughs> Go.
Go with me over here to the book of Micah. Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. Jonah, uh, Micah, chapter, was it, chapter number six. Micah chapter number six. And now I'll let you go. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you to drop down with me to verse number seven. They say here, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with 10,000 of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? And he's asking a question because People would rather give God what they desire. That's walking in the flesh. I can't give God what I desire. Why? Because God is holy. God is righteous. God has his own requirements. And God is not going to compromise with me. God is not going to compromise with you. Amen? God will work with you, but he's not going to compromise who he is, his standard. God is not going to lower his standard for me. Let me back up on that. The reason why I say that is he already lowered his standard when he said that God humbled himself even to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. God, God has already, if you allow me to say it this way, lowered himself, or humbled himself for us, to deal with us. The angels said, God, what is man? <laughs> that you're so mindful of them. Oh, the son of man that you should even visit them. Why are you, why are you so concerned about them? <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so concerned about us because he loves us. Love causes you to sacrifice. Cause, love causes you to look beyond faults and see the need. Amen? So, but God is not going to compromise who he is because of us. Amen? Uh, the, the King Saul, he lost out on his inheritance and his position because he uh, Failed to give God what he required. People will lose out and fall short when they fail to give with God what he requires. Amen? Y'all remember? Saul was supposed to offer up certain things. He killed the Amalekites. He took what he wanted. Left those alive who he wanted to be alive. And Samuel asked him a question, you know, about whether or not uh, his, his offering and his sacrifice, would, was it pleasing to God? And his offering, his sacrifice was not pleasing to God. God would have you to obey rather than sacrifice. Amen? Obedience is better than what? Sacred. That's a principle or a statue of God. Anytime that God requires something of you, you have to sacrifice it unto the Lord. Amen? Now this is your maturity. I'm going to show you a mature person. A mature person hears from the Lord and understands what the Lord desires. And gives it to him immediately. An immature person will sit down and ponder it. Think about it. They know what God requires. 
They know what God is asking for them. But an immature person says, I don't know. Uh, let me let me wait. Let me wait a little bit. Let me wait on this. They already know what God requires. They already know what God is looking for. They say, oh, well, let me think about this for a minute. I ain't ready. Let me, let me, let me give, let me give a little bit, and then I'll see how that works, and then I'll give a little bit more. Let me, let me, let me, let me do it my way. See, that's an immature person. A mature person accepts what God has said and submits to what God has said, and they do it with all they are, with all they should, with all they might. All right, now notice, notice this. Verse number eight, it says, He has shown thee, God has been an example unto us, O oh man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? Now, what I love about that verse, that part of that verse here, is that God is not asking of you of something that he has not already demonstrated to you and for you. Let me say that again. God is not asking of you to do anything that he has not already done. That he's not already done to you and for you. You can bring it home, bring it personal. God has been good to you. God has been just to you. God has loved you. God has kept you. God has watched over you. God has sacrificed for you. You're not keeping yourself. It is God that's keeping us. It is God that wakes us up in the morning and starts us on our way. It is God that, that, that puts food on your table. It's not your job. God gives you strength to go to your job. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, God, when the enemy wants to take away your stuff, if you allow me to say it that way, which God has given unto you, he lifts up a standard. Uh, against the enemy. When he wants to come in at you like a flood. It's God. Hallelujah. That, 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 that deals with you justly. And when I say he deals with you justly. He deals with you justly. Tempered with mercy. Hallelujah. My God. God, God, God doesn't cash in on us. Huh? He doesn't cash in on us. My God. God is patient with us. Isn't it? Uh, God, God waits for us. My right? God endures us. My God, so, so what he's modeled toward you, he wants you to model toward others. How, how God lives before you, he wants you to live before men. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's what he requires. That's what he requires. And you have to receive it as not an option. A lot of people think that, well, what God has said, I got some options. What God has said, I got some options. What, in his statutes, in his commandments, I got some options. No, there's no option. Huh? You either obey or you don't obey. And, and the beauty of this, these upper verses is talking about you can't compromise with God. You can't compromise with Him. Man, I thought I was going to have a joy and a peace. And, and, but, but this is joy and peace. <laughs> if you obey, you're going to have some joy. If you obey, you're going to have some peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, and in this time, we have to focus on what God requires because the time is winding up. Huh? Hallelujah. God, God wants us to be the light. My God, I can't, I wish I could, uh, uh, I heard what, uh, what Bishop said. He said, I wish I could put what's in my mind in your 
don't matter. I, I, I wish I could, I wish I could do that. Huh? My God. God, God is saying to us, I've shown me what's required. Walk in my ways. Walk in my steps. Don't try to bring me some bulls and goats and heifers. Huh? They were, they were, they, they were bringing God those sacrifices, but they were bringing them without repentance. They were just going through the motions. You don't want to live this life by going through the motions. That's what I meant by we can compartmentalize. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I can I can tell somebody I love them and really hate them. Huh? Men men are are good at uh, compartmentalizing. In this respect, they say, well, I got my woman, I got my job, I got my boys, and I, 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 I went over here, I got, I, got, I got my money, or my hobbies. Follow? But with women, all of that blend in together. That's why you can go to a woman's office and you see pictures of the family, pictures of the husband, uh, pictures of their friends. Because all of that with them, that's all together. That's all together. But with men, men can compartmentalize. So I got my homies, these my boys, this my woman. Oh, I forgot that. That's my children. You know, they 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 they, they break things up. What you trying to say, Pastor? God does not want you to break things up. God wants you to have everything together. Everything in one pot. Amen? Y'all follow me? Everything in one pot. I can't say, well, I live one way at church and I live another way at home. I can't say that I live one way with my wife and live another way with my friends. Huh? Y'all with me? Uh, you got to be the same. Jesus Christ said, He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Don't, don't be a chameleon. When you get around certain people, you change. My God. My God. All right. Now, know. so kindly and so 
lovingly and forgivingly when they have done you so wrong. Uh, that's the flesh. The flesh will argue with you. Uh, and, 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 and cause you, if you allow it, to bring you under subjection to its will. So then you can't do what's right. But the spirit will say, well, they, you know they did you that way. You know what God requires. You know what God is saying. Huh? And, if, and if you sit back and ponder the flesh, it'll war against the spirit. So that's why you got to subdue the flesh by the spirit. Father, and how do you do that? By obeying the spirit. Hallelujah. Don't give space to the devil. Don't give space to your flesh. Anytime your flesh, this is what I meant by, I'm back to my other point when I got started. My God, that's why I said you've got to spot the enemy before it gets to you. The devil is always trying to speak to your mind. To, to tell you this and tell you that. You've got to be more spiritual and realize, uh-uh, that's the devil. That's the enemy's thoughts. That's not God's thoughts. That's not God's way. The devil will always bring up your past about how good you had. <laughs> about the options that you had. Huh? My God. Hallelujah. About, about the way you used to be. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and they'll tell you, man, they better be glad that I'm not the way I used to be. Uh, you'll rationalize. Thank you, Lord. And you've got to realize, I'm being honest right now, that that's not God. Anytime you're thinking about anything that pertains to wickedness and evil, or you're thinking about doing wicked or evil, You've got to fear the Lord thy God. Meaning, you've got to turn that thought uh, and bring it into subjection to the obedience of Christ. And do it early. Do it quick. Don't, don't play with it. Amen? Can't play with the devil. You can't play with your wicked thoughts. You can't play with the evil thoughts that come in your mind. Don't sit around and entertain them. Amen? You got to do justice. You got to do what's right. Hallelujah. And, and I ain't telling you, uh, uh, I got to walk in the Himalayas and my mind in the Himalayas. Uh, I got to be super high-bred spiritual. No. I ain't telling you you got to be super high-bred spiritual. I'm telling you, you got to think soberly, huh? according to the scriptures. Live this life, but live it uh, according to righteousness. <laughs> Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Live it according to God's commands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, All right let me finish up. Notice what he said. He said, he said, he have shown thee what's required of thee. I mean, he have shown thee, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee. Notice, uh, but to do justly. And now he says to love mercy. You got to fall in love with mercy. That word mercy uh, literally means to, when you have somebody that, that have done you wrong, that has mistreated you, and you have all power to expose them and to, uh, 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 how can I say it? Bring them to justice and you let them go. And you love it. People say, oh, you stupid, you crazy. You say, no, but God loves me. He showed me mercy. God showed me love. He's got to be the standard. Not what other people do. Not what other people say. But it's what God does. It's what God says. Amen? Thank you. I'm bringing
break, I'm trying to break this down as simple as plain as can be. <laughs> now notice, notice the last part, and to walk humbly with thy God. Now, that one there is the huge one. Because what he's saying is, is that you submit to all the commands of God regardless of the consequences. That's walking humbly with God. You submit to the whole will and word of God regardless of the consequences. If you walk with God, you're going to be persecuted. If you walk with God, you're going to be talked about. But Paul said, uh, 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 persecuted but not destroyed. Cast out but not destroyed. Forsaken, I'll live. And, and he goes on and on. And you have to realize that uh, when you walk with God, it's, 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 it's going to be rough on your flesh. Huh? And people are going to talk about you. And, and it may seem like you're losing, but you're winning every day. Uh, when you walk with God and you humble yourself, you winning every day. Why? Because he said all things are working together for your good. When you trust in God, put your confidence in God, there's no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. When you look to God as your source, look to God as your help, there's nothing in this world that he would withhold from me. Hallelujah. And he'll heal all your wounds. He'll give you strength and courage. He'll be your friend. He'll be your shield. He'll be your very present help in your time of trouble. Hallelujah. That's why we got to humble ourselves. And when you're humbling yourself, you're literally, literally, you've got to uh, resist the devil. You've got to resist the enemy. God, the enemy is your adversary. He's trying to get you to, to, to lose your confidence with God. My God. My God. I'm getting upset already. Uh, look at the enemy. He's trying to move us away from him that, is, that loves us. He's trying to move us away from him that, that wants to do us good. Yeah. Notice what Jesus said. Jesus said, come unto me. Huh? All ye that labor and are heavy laden. I don't know about you, but I was heavy. Uh, I was heavy laden. Uh, loaded up with sin. Loaded up with Frank's ideas. Hallelujah. And then Jesus said, come unto me. Uh, all ye that labor and heavy laden. Notice, he said, I will give thee what? Rest. Uh, how many are you tired of the devil? I'm tired of, of sin and shame. I'm tired, hallelujah, of living a lifestyle that does not please God. I'm tired of not walking in the ways of righteousness. I'm tired of being made a fool of because of my own will and because of my own desires. So, so I need some rest. Uh, and I'll find that rest in Jesus. He said, in the world you're going to have tribulation. In the world you're going to have trouble. Uh, in the world I have nothing but tribulation. In the world I have nothing but trouble. Uh, he said, my peace give I unto thee. Not as the world give it. Hallelujah. I want the peace that passes all understanding. I want the peace that gives me joy in the midst of my storm. I want the peace that will build me up. I want the peace that will cause me to look beyond all of my faults and, and look to all of my needs that can be satisfied in Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, I'll give you that peace. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's an oxymoron. He wants my trials and tribulations and he'll give me his peace. He'll give me his joy. He said, I'll give you beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. He'll give you joy. Thank you, Lord. He said, come unto me. Notice, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He said, and I will give thee rest. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And he said, take my yoke. Huh? You got to take the yoke of Jesus. Huh? That's why we were buried with him in baptism. 
baptism. That's why when we rose up, we rose up to walk in that newness of life. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His yoke is to be the light of the world. His yoke, hallelujah, is to be the salt of the earth. His yoke is to be the witness. His yoke, hallelujah, is to lift up the Father. His yoke is to give praises unto his God. Hallelujah, that's what you got to say. Hallelujah, I'm going to take the yoke of Jesus. Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. But notice what he said. He said, learn of me. Huh? Learn what God requires. Hey, go, 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 go. Hey, go. And a lot of us fall by the wayside because we're not learning these things. Uh, we're not learning and practicing what the Lord requires. Hallelujah. He showed us down through the years, through the scriptures. He showed us what he requires. Have you learned it? Uh, have you received it? And if you miss the mark, he gives you the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, it teaches you, it leads you, and it guides you into all truth. But you got to submit. Hallelujah. You got to submit. Hallelujah. Be like Esther. If I perish, I perish. But I'm going to see the king. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let be like, be like Jacob. I won't let you go until you bless my soul. Hallelujah. Be like the Hebrew boys that said, Lord, hallelujah, I know that you're able, hallelujah, to deliver me. My God, that's humbleness. That's humility. Hallelujah. You've got to take every lesson. Learn from the lesson of Saul. Hallelujah. King Saul who did his own will. Learn from the lesson of Barak, the dumbass. Hallelujah. That, that, that wanted to go in a disobey God. But he allowed that ass to speak to him. Hallelujah. Say, haven't I always obeyed you? Hallelujah. Shock. you got to learn the lessons from the scriptures, from the word of God. And they got to allow them to be quickened to you in your spirit. Hallelujah. Because this word was written. It was written for your learning. It was written for your admonition. So that you can be the man or woman of God. Thoroughly furnished. Prepared unto every good work. Hallelujah. You got to do what God requires. Hallelujah. You got to learn. Amen. Jesus said. He said. Huh? He said. Search the scriptures. Huh? For in them you think you have eternal life. But they are they which talk about me. Hallelujah. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Hallelujah. Jesus. He left us an example. And that we should follow in his steps. Hallelujah. We got to do what's required. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I can't, I gotta stop listening to Facebook. Right. Hey, hallelujah, I gotta stop listening to what, 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 what Jerry Springer says. I, I gotta stop following all of my days and all of my lives. I am searching for tomorrow. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be like a Psalm 1 person. How blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. How that standeth in the way of sinners. No seated in the seat of the scornful. But I've got to allow my delight, my joy, my peace, uh, my help uh, to be in the law of the Lord. And in His law, I've got to meditate. Hey, day and night, night and day. Hallelujah. So I can be like that tree uh, that is planted by the rivers of water. That has to be our desire. That has to be our goal. That has to be our purpose. Amen? Hallelujah, my God. And that's what God is requiring of us. Uh, not, for, not for His good, uh, because God is good. <laughs> but for our good. Amen? So, so that we can, we, can, we can receive elevation. Huh? What you mean by that, Pastor? I'm going to let y'all go out and go on over my time. But, but God, God wants to promote us. Hallelujah. What I mean by that? That in this life, Paul said, only in this life we have hope in Christ. We're all men most miserable. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the life to come, God is going to promote us. Amen. Hallelujah. When the scripture says, eyes have not 
seen, no ears have heard, huh? but have entered into the hearts of men. Hallelujah, oh, what God has prepared for them that love Him. It's entered into my heart. Hallelujah. Oh, God, God has prepared some things for us. Now we only know in part, we only see in part, but that which I know and that which I see is glorious. <laughs> it's, 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 this life is worth living. Hey, God, son of a life, God. Hallelujah. And, 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 and whatever I can imagine, whatever you can imagine, God has greater. Uh, hey, uh, God has better. Thank you, Lord. If you see it one way, and it's glorious and it's magnificent, magnify that about a billion times. Hallelujah. Your God has greater. Uh, your God has greater. I said, your God has great. Your God has great. Hallelujah. So it's, it's, it's worth laying aside every way. It's worth laying aside the sin that does so easily beset us. I'm looking unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Come on and give God a praise. I see everybody here been baptized in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I, I pray that God fill everybody with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Uh, and I mean that sincerely. Even if you have the Holy Ghost, be refilled. Hallelujah. Uh, be renewed. Be refreshed. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you, we got because we got to do what God requires. Amen. Uh, hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And as we uh, get ready. Uh, to close out this service, we certainly do thank God and praise God uh, for all that he has done. Truly, God is, is wonderful and he's magnificent. Amen. I want to ask Sister Monique if she'll come here for a second. Hallelujah. And we praise God as she's on our way. And we thank God for all that he is doing and all that he is doing in our lives. And we praise him for his magnificent work that he has shown toward the children of man. And as we get ready to leave, we want to praise the Lord for everybody.